So before we move on to the lead optimization and the ways by which you can do lead optimization, first we will just see what all things were done last lecture. So basically you have different sources of lead discovery in which it could be you start from natural light and, and either you want to make an agonist or antagonist, depending on that, you will make changes in the natural light end and you can come up to a molecule like for example proteogotin so it is a basically dopamine agonist which is useful in treatment of parkinson's disease and certain structural features are retained in rotigotin from dopamine okay these are the other examples then other known ligands, we have seen example of paranecrine, which is developed from the structure of nicotine and cyclicine. Okay. And this varenicidin, it's an uh, important drug, or you can say important compound uh, that is known to interact with the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, just like nicotine. <clears throat> Same is the case with cysticine. So cysticine, it's an um, uh, drug which is helpful in patients who smoke. So to quit smoking, cysticine is useful. Other examples, we have seen diazepam zolotonic acid. Then we had moved on to the screening of compounds and seen the ways by which you can screen the compounds. There are advances, obviously. The best thing uh, that has happened to the drug discovery process is the high profit screening when thousands of compounds can be screened on a single day. So you will come to know the activity for a, a particular therapeutic use. Okay, And then this, these are the uh, advancements in the system basically. So initially it was 96 wells. So maybe at different concentrations, you can test around 12 compounds. Then with 84 wells, different concentrations, as well as you can test many more compounds as compared to the 96 well. And now still you have a further advancement of 1536 wells. And all this screening can occur robotically. So actually there is no manpower investment that is involved. Now you can either have random screening or targeted screening. In random screening, we have seen that it's just blind screening. It does not involve any sort of intellectualization. So you would be screening all the compounds against all the activities. Okay. While in case of your targeted screening, you are more focused. Say, for example, you know that uh, my compound should have a nitrogen heterocycle or it should have a bicyclic ring system. So then you will screen only those compounds which are having this characteristic features or the functional groups. Then we had seen uh, virtual screening, wherein it's virtual structures that are screened rather than synthesizing the compound and actual testing. You test whether the compounds are able to bind. Uh, you can use any of the computational methods like structure-based drug design, like hand based drug design, 3D QSAR, or homology modeling for performing the studies. Then there is something called as fragment based drug discovery also, which can be used nowadays. Then we had gone through this slide definitely. Like when we talk about lead optimization, uh, the notable parameters that are required to be optimized are potency, selectivity, ADME, that is absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, as well as the intellectual property position. Okay. So with this, uh, I guess this was the last slide we had seen. So today we are going to look into the lead optimization. First of all, which properties? As we have seen in the earlier slide, the first property that is mentioned is potency. And potency, you know, higher the potency, the less dose of the drug needs to be administered to achieve the desired effect. So basically, it talks about the strength of the biological effect based on the concentration, how much concentration. So lower the concentration is to be administered, you are reducing the cost of the drug, that is one advantage, as well as you are maximizing the patient compliance, you are maximizing the convenience of administration. 
obviously if i give you 20 mg pill and a 500 mg pill you will be definitely preferring the 20 mg pill because it's easy to swallow so this is how the potency of the drug is going to reduce the uh, size of the pills as well as the cost of the drug because you are taking less amount okay at the same time uh, even when you are using less amount of drug the side effects that are seen with the large doses that can be overcome so the off target finding can be reduced right is this clear to everyone <coughs> yes ma'am okay yeah. next is selectivity now when we talk about selectivity in medicinal chemistry we are particularly focusing on the subtype of receptor okay say for example i am having acetylcholine receptors so in acetylcholine receptors you know you have nicotinic and muscarinic receptors right now if i don't want to block the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors i see to it that the modifications in the structure is such that the uh, drug will bind only to the muscarinic acetylcholine receptors as far as possible because when i'm talking about acetylcholine receptors uh, the makeup could be uh, almost same okay the amino acid sequence of the receptor could be the same but here the advantage of muscarinic and nicotinic is that uh, nicotinic receptors are ion channel receptors so it's a totally different mechanism of action as far as the signal transduction is concerned by in case of muscarinic acetylcholine receptor it's a gpcr okay so there getting the selectivity or achieving the selectivity would be much easier while when we talk about the uh, dopamine receptors for example uh, bnt1 d2 d3 d4 or d5 all of these they are gpcrs okay they are gpcrs g protein coupled receptors so to get the selectivity in case of dopamine receptors would be difficult at the same time it is not only about the receptor subtype you have to see to it that your off target finding is reduced in general so one is definitely the related family members as i spoke about the d1 d2 d3 d4 and d5 if i want only the d1 antagonist then i should have the selectivity the compound should be able to bind only to the d1 receptors at the same time uh, we should see to it that the compound does not exclusively bind the enzyme system especially the cytochrome p450 because you know this cytochrome p450 enzymatic system which is present in our liver it is responsible for the maximum uh, metabolism of the drug or the first pass metabolism of the drug right by either oxidation reduction or hydrolysis reactions so as far as possible those should not be the target can anyone tell me why we have to prevent metabolism can anyone tell me why you need to prevent the metabolism of the drug in some cases in some cases you need to prevent the metabolism and in some cases you need to enhance the uh, metabolism yes bolo to increase the viability of the drug yes if it is a case that your compound the main parent drug is more active and the metabolite is inactive so you want your drug to be in the active form in the blood stream for a longer period of time that is when you need to reduce the metabolism why if you observe that your compound the parent compound is not so active but the metabolite is active so in that case you would want that the drug binds to the required enzyme for the metabolism so it is a two way sword basically for example pro drugs you know pro drugs themselves they are not active only when they get metabolized they are activated so in that case you want the compound to bind to the cytochrome p450 enzyme okay so uh, what is the role or reason for avoiding uh, cytochrome p450 as off target it will assist in eliminating the drugs from the system the cytochrome p450 enzyme and inhibiting these off targets can result in drug drug interactions as well for example if you are giving two drugs at the same time best example we have seen of uh, pexofenadine terfenadine 